Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website, WayneD.com. And this is one of our swing analysis of an old timer, Tom Weisskopf. In the 1970s, he was definitely one of the best players in the world. Uh, he won 16 PGA Tour events between uh, 1968 and 1982, and in 1973, won seven times in the British Open to boot. He was a uh, four times Masters runner up, was uh, once runner up in the U.S. Open, played in a couple of Ryder Cups. He was an interesting character. He uh, was known for being very intense and had a little bit of a temper. And in 1977, which shows you how times have changed, he qualified for the Ryder Cup and skipped it to go big game hunting. So, I don't think anybody's doing that these days. So he's a tall guy, he's 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 um, high ball hitter, long, very long uh, for the day, but good control. He was a uh, an excellent iron player. So one of the interesting things about his swing, which you see these days too, if you watch the driver swing, you know, for length, it would get all the way back to parallel or even a little bit past. And with the iron swings, you would never see him take an iron all the way back. Much, much shorter swings with his irons. So as we watch him, in the in the takeaway, you can see how his takeaway is what uh, would be called these days a right forearm takeaway. So if you watch the right arm start the swing by buckling a little bit at the elbow, and then he would cock his right wrist, which would flatten the left wrist. And then he would just maintain that up to the top. So that wrist position you're starting to see, actually, more these days uh, from some of the guys. If you look at it, Kepka or Rahm or, or, or others, the, the, the short swing with the bent... Uh, bowed left wrist. Now what I really like about about Weisskopf's swing is how he moved his hands more outward toward the ball and kept the club in front of him. So really no danger here of ever being what anybody would call stuck. You see a little back up in the head but when we look at the at the side view you're gonna see a massive amount of lateral movement both in the back swing you can see him load way back to the right. And then with great sequence, and you'll see him start the lower body and just slide that baby massive amount forward. So the key when you look at these uh, swings back in the 70s, and these are the swings that I copied sort of when I was growing up, even though I was five foot eight, uh, I hadn't really tuned into Hogan yet at that point and I was more influenced by uh, the Weisskopf, Nicholas Watson, Miller type swings which ended up like this. So that huge amount of bend is a result of two things. The left leg would, would not stop moving forward so the knees would be driving the whole time and the idea was that the head should stay behind well into the finish so so you end up with this large amount of forward movement into a flexed left knee So I never really thought about that as a way to uh, get the hands forward and compress the ball more. But my guess is when you watch these swings from way back when, that you see a lot of that in order to get the flight of the ball to come down a little bit. Let's watch this interesting shot here.
So the thing that 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 I like about this is again uh, something that we see see now if you watch the tilt of the pelvis in the transition you're going to see the addition of hip flexion and a slight lowering of the head in transition in order to keep the hips deep now with all that lateral slide it's going to look more like the the hips are going to go out from under them a little bit at the end but it's really not early extension so to speak it's just an additional amount of lateral movement so nowadays the left leg would be pushing up and straightening more but he's going to keep this thing forward and keep his head back more but you can also see how he he maintains a nice on plane position and the shaft never gets across the line really and then you have a slight slight flattening of the shaft this is a little bit off plane vertical but then you can see him flatten it a bit here but again it's out in front of him all the time no risk of having the club trap behind him and you can see how the left wrist which was flat to begin with is now bent down even a little more going through impact so let's take another couple of views so the feeling of of driving the pelvis forward and keeping the head back again it was something that influenced my swing and was more than likely although I'm not going to blame it on anyone uh, <laughs> one of the main reasons for my eventual issues with my lower back because this just doesn't look healthy right there but a huge talent Weisskopf so here's another example of the takeaway as the right arm leads it the left wrist flattens and swing nice and short you don't see a lot of hip turn in Weisskopf so if you look at his driver swing again whereas a lot of the guys would allow the left heel to come way up Weisskopf was not one of those guys so you might think that you know everybody back then had a lifted left heel and a lot of lower body movement Weisskopf did not he moved off the ball but watch how he holds his left leg and knee where it is in resistance so you get a huge turn in that sequence this is really awesome where he gets started if you look at that that swing from this odd angle here there's the heel coming up a little bit there's that longer driver swing so definitely two different swings with two different designs you've got a controlled iron swing you know where the club really doesn't get much past here then you've got the bomb driver swing So if you only looked at it from this angle, you'd think his left leg was pushing up and straightening, but you know for a fact from watching it from the other side that his hips are so forward right now and his head is so back that the left knee really, although it does definitely straighten up in, into impact there with 
as he uses the the ground for bracing and to get the left leg to can help complete that hip turn he'll rebend it so it's much straighter here in the follow through than it is as he gets to the finish so all in all pretty interesting to watch there's one more swing So if you think about anybody that kind of looks like this these days, it would have to be Tom Lehman, and he's already approaching 60 years old. So this is just something that you don't see much anymore. Weisskopf pretty much stopped playing in the mid-80s, did some work with CBS, and then he went on to be an excellent uh course designer. So here's a here's a good swing you can really see that sequencing and how that lateral pelvic movement is stretching his lat. You can look at the size of that thing there. So it's no wonder that he was one of the longest hitters of the, of the day. Must have been fun watching him and Nicholas go after it. Alright, Tom Weisskopf.